love of the Ladies and gentlemen, we have a series of videos. Something that can make you do wrong, make you do right. That we're doing right yeah. now. Because no. we got to bring some things to you all's attention. Al, can you go ahead and uh, bring this video on in? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be doing a series of videos to help our people who are around this planet going through foreclosure. I assure you, most of the information, some of you had an idea, you just never had proof. So what I've decided to do is since I was speaking with a gentleman this morning, he and I did a consult. He has an unlawful detainer that has been filed against him. His property has already been foreclosed on. Is there anything that he can do since the law only is going to consider whether or not he has a right to be in that property? Well, the first video, because my job is to give you more than one option. So the first video talked about adverse possession. Now we're going to talk about redemption. Seen the movie? Well, this ain't got nothing to do with that movie. Okay, this is all about property. Notice this right here. If those procedures complied with the redemption statutes, the certificate was properly discharged in 1955 by the tax collector and the defendants would be entitled to summary judgment. If not, plaintiff is entitled to proper redemption. Now, this is regarding taxes. Ladies and gentlemen, you people keep we keep talking about redemption and taxes. There is a way to receive redemption and taxes, but we're not talking about taxes this video. We're talking about your right to equitable and statutory redemption. So what we put in at the very top here is plaintiff is entitled to statutory redemption. Now, we did statutory redemption because the young man who lost the property, as a matter of fact, i tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to pause you for a second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what I can promise you is this is the link for the case laws that we just looked at. And what we did is we created a document that's called Statutory Redemption Memorandum of Judicial Opinion. This will be up on the website later today under the mortgage section so that you guys can just click on the link and you can actually go to the page and you can actually do your search for the exact same thing. Okay? So... That's one document. We're going to be creating the second one. Sorry. I have to let you know. We're going to be creating the second document that's going to talk about the second subject. There's going to be one about adverse possession. Every single thing of the videos in this mortgage series, we're going to show you where to get the case memorandum of text from. Let's talk about statutory redemption. Ladies and gentlemen, usually statutory redemption is each state has a redemption law. You can check through Google, statutory redemption, blah, 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 state. Now, here is something they are not going to tell you about. So give me a second so I'll locate the location of what I need to show you, and then I will bring you there. The first thing you all need to understand is this is a sample deed of trust. This is what I had to show the gentleman, and this is just a sample of basically the Uniform Deed of Trust document. At number five, usually at number five and number 10, it talks about the insurance. Okay? It actually talks about mortgage insurance, and it requires Every conventional loan, the law requires for there to be insurance on the property. However, what we are looking for is something specific. Watch what I do. I'm going to do a quick search in this document. Let's see if it did what I needed. Okay, R-E-D-E-M-P-T-I-O-N. Let's see if it will find the word in the document.
All right. I did not know that I didn't have you guys on pause, so I apologize. But you see what I've been looking for. So what I and I'm going to let it be because I don't want to have to go through the beginning of the video and do it again because I will miss what I was saying at the beginning. So I apologize for that. I did think I hit pause. That's why I wasn't saying anything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the part that caught my attention. This is the insurance, and we're only going to talk about this for a brief moment. We'll talk about it more in detail later. The borrower abandons the property. We're not concerned about that. What we're concerned about, the borrower hereby assigns to the lender the borrower's rights in any proceeds in an amount not to exceed the amount of unpaid, unpaid on the note, or this security instrument, or any other borrower's rights other than the right to any refund of unearned premiums paid by the borrower. You need to do a recension of this assignment, or you need to do a notice of reassignment. Okay? The same as the lender gets to assign a trustee, the borrower is going to unassign this section right here because you're waiving all rights ladies and gentlemen under all insurance policies covering the property insofar as such rights are applicable to the coverage of the property the lender may use the insurance proceeds either to repay or restore the property or to pay amounts unpaid under the note or the security interest whether or not then do okay you need to redo this now remember this is not a irrevocable agreement this is a trust agreement this is not an irrevocable trust this is a revocable trust everybody needs to understand that let's do that uh before i find what i need so i put in the word revoke revocable Let's put in IRR. There is no irrevocable statement in this trust. This is not an irrevocable trust, ladies and gentlemen. It is a simply in trust. When the courts say that this is not a trust agreement, this is a trust. Now, this is where it says irrevocably says for this purpose the borrower irrevocably so let's do irrevocably only one time is this word here so only this section would power sell to follow prescribed property at this address the only way they can do this grant to the trustee the power of sale Following the prescribed property located, the only way they can do this, and I need you to understand, is under the Non-Judicial Foreclosure Act. That's why they get to do this. However, this does not qualify as a loan. And at the time you entered into the security agreement, you did not have control of the property. You did not even have an interest in the property. Now, need you all to understand, now this right here, explains what you're conveying and the only thing you give the trustee is the power of sale that's the only thing he has is the power of sale that power of sale is only if there is a default on the loan okay under the security agreement for this purpose the borrower only for the purpose of repaying the loan Okay, only for that purpose, but he can only foreclose on this property, pay attention, through a judicial process, not a non-judicial process. He may have the power of sale, but that's only after it has been determined that there was no payment. And you're going to be challenging this section. Not going to talk about this right now. Let's... uh. Give me one second. I have to look for something. I, I will be right back. And this time I will put you on pause.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's your right of redemption. It has nothing to do with equitable or statutory. Your right of redemption is written into the contract. If the borrower meets certain conditions, the borrower should have the right to have enforcement of this security agreement uh, instrument discontinued at any time prior to the earliest of five days before the sale pursuant to the blah, 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 such other periods applicable to law might specify the termination of the borrower's rights to, give me a second, reinstate or entry of a judgment enforcing the security agreement. These, those conditions are that the borrowers pay the lenders all sum, which then would be due under this security agreement, which is the reason why you have a right to demand, as in the QWR um, equitable document that we have on our site, it demands for them to give you a full accounting, a comprehensive accounting. You have that right. Look in your security agreement. It says that you have the right to require all sums. Gives you the right to cure the default. That's your right of equitable redemption, people. This is your right of statutory redemption because it's embedded in your contract. So let's get back to that section so that I can further emphasize to you all what's going on. Statutory redemption, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why we created the statutory redemption document. It is for those of you who have lost your property, it is beyond the foreclosure sale. The right of redemption is embedded in your contract. You're going to have to watch the full series to see how this applies to each one of you for securing your property based upon the contractual agreement. Remember, the right to contract is secured by law. Everyone has the right to contract. If you have to follow the contract, the other party has to follow the contract. So follow the contract as written. Grab your deed of trust. Become an expert at what your deed says. Okay? Borrower's obligation to pay the sum secured by this security instrument shall continue unchanged. The lender may require the borrower to pay such reinstatement sums and expenses in one or more of the following forms. Cash, money order, certified check, bank check, treasury check, cashier's check. Provided any such check is drawn upon an institution whose, and pay attention, a money order is not a check. I don't care what the courts say. A money order has never been a check. The history of money order is not according to what Congress says a money order is now because Congress doesn't control money orders. Money orders were invented in the 1800s. United States did not create money orders. They did not invent money orders. Congress never had any jurisdiction over money orders. Money orders were a private invention done by a private entity. Congress doesn't get the job to regulate that. Just why, uh, just as why they don't have any jurisdiction over your private property. Constitution doesn't give them that jurisdiction. They'd be drawn upon an institution whose deposits are insured by a federal agency, instrumentality, or entity, or by electronics funds transfer. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, electronics funds transfer. Now, I promise you, you all need to follow me. The reason why they added this is because of individuals doing the money orders. But you all need to follow me on this. Watch all of the videos. You're going to see how you can use the hour style money order to pay off this debt. And it'll be in line. Now, this only talks about the lender may require the borrower to pay such reinstatement. So this only applies to reinstatement. Does not apply to the language on the note. The note supersedes this. Without the note, this doesn't exist. Sell of the note, change in the servicer, notice of grievance. The note or partial interest in a note together with security instrument can be sold one or more times without prior notice to the borrower. A sale might result in a change of the entity known as the loan servicer that collects periodic payments 
do under the note and the security instruments and performance uh, performs other mortgage loan service and obligations under the note. The security agreement and that and applicable law. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no uh, agreement that you will use a servicer. This says it might result. This speaks of a loan servicer might result in a change in the entity known as the loan servicer. There is no law requiring you to have a loan servicer. It's also, there also may be one or more changes in the loan servicer. We're unrelated to the sale of the note. If this is a change of loan, if there is a change in the loan servicer, the borrower will be given written notice of the change. Pay attention so that you guys get it because there's something you're not paying attention to, but I paid attention to it. Can be sold one or more times without prior notice to the borrower. If there's a change in the servicer, oh, by the way, the loan, the note, maybe the note may be sold. They can sell the note. That doesn't sell the loan. The note is just evidencing. That's just a promissory note. So they can sell the note. They can do it because people used to give notes to others. IOUs used to win it in poker games and all that. That is, they have the right to do that. Here is the problem that you all need to pay attention. If there is a change in a loan servicer, the borrower will be given notice of the change which will state the name and address of the new loan servicer, the address to which payments should be made, doesn't say must be made, and any other information RISPA requires in connections with notice of transfer or servicing. If the note is sold and thereafter the loan is serviced by a loan servicer other than the purchaser of the note, the mortgage loan servicing obligation of the borrower will remain with the pay attention loan servicer or to be transferred to the successor loan servicer and are not assumed by the note purchaser unless otherwise provided by the note purchaser. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention to what this says. If the note is sold and thereafter the loan servicer changes and it is to a party other than the note holder, the mortgage loan servicer's uh, servicing obligation to the borrower will remain with the original loan servicer. Okay, it says, or be transferred to a successor loan servicer, but that is with notice. But it has to be with the note and are not to be assumed by the note purchaser unless otherwise provided by the note purchaser. We have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, this video was just designed to talk to you about your right of statutory redemption. It is embedded in your contract. It allows you to pay off the note should there be a problem with a default claim. The borrower's rights to reinstate after acceleration. The moment the lender says, hey, we're accelerating this note, there are certain things that the borrower is allowed transfer the property beneficial interest to the borrower. Certain things the borrower is allowed to do because remember, this is your contract. You wrote this. The lender did not write this contract. You wrote it. That's why the lender's signature is nowhere on the document. Let's go down here and make sure that you understand. That's why at closing, they have a notary present. Instead of you going to a notary and getting the document done, or doing any other alterations, Ooh. by signing below, the borrower accepts and agrees to the terms and covenants of the security instrument. Remember, this is not an irrevocable agreement. The only thing that's irrevocable is the uh, trustee sale. The rest of the agreement is not irrevocable. The rest of the agreement can be changed. So notice of change in terms of the agreement is what the law requires. This is not an irrevocable trust. Only one provision of the trust is irrevocable. Go and check your document. You won't be able to do what I'm doing, look for the words in the document. You have to find a document similar to yours. This one is a general mortgage document. So I'm showing you the sections that it would be in. You find the same thing 
and that's your leverage that it is not an irrevocable trust it is a revocable trust which means in order for them to facilitate the trust if you challenge it then it has to be judicial it cannot be non-judicial see they're applying the non-judicial foreclosure act they cannot apply the non-judicial foreclosure act we're going to talk about that in a second gotta go ladies and gentlemen we'll be right back with another video in this series the foreclosure mortgage series